Welcome to GeoBiz. Uh, we are catching up today with Walter Scott, Executive Vice President and CTO of Digital Globe. Walter, thank you. Thanks for joining on GeoBiz. Happy to be here. What is the unique value proposition Digital Globe brings to Earth observation industry vis-a-vis -vis its competition? So I think one of the things Digital Globe brings is the um, the quality of data that enables uh, our customers to act with confidence on uh, on the facts on the ground. And that's a combination of a variety of factors. It's um, being able to uh, offer high resolution data that is high enough resolution that you can actually understand what's happening on the ground. Uh, it's making that data accessible in a time frame where you can act uh, in time to have an impact. And so uh, we make data available online as little as uh, 12, 13 minutes after it's been collected, typically under two and a half hours. And uh, increasingly, we are making it available for analytics at uh, extremely large scale, uh, leveraging our platform technology. Tell us about the Worldview 4, the, which is uh, upcoming uh, for Digital Globe. So Worldview 4, uh, we expect to launch uh, later this summer, uh, most likely in September. And it will double the amount of 30 centimeter capacity that Digital Globe is able to provide. So Worldview 4 uh, is uh, the next in the series of Worldview satellites that uh, collected extremely high resolution, 30 centimeter, which is the best uh, available uh, by far in the industry, and also with uh, extremely high uh, positional accuracy. So the sort of accuracies that we're able to achieve from space are from hundreds of miles away being able to uh, localize a point on the ground to something less than the size of a Chevy Suburban, uh, which is analogous to um, shooting the ear off a dime about a mile away. So pretty high accuracy. What kind of applications do you see that uh, accuracies uh, be really needing for? Really two things. There's, there's the, the resolution and the positional accuracy. The resolution is uh, essential for being able to know what it is that you're looking at. And uh, a very meaningful example of that, um, you, you probably heard about the Pulitzer Prize that was announced for uh, public service to the uh, four Associated Press reporters who uh, did a piece on slave fishing in uh, Asia. And the result of that investigation led to freeing 2,000 slaves. Well, it was the ability of Digital Globe imagery to uniquely identify the ships that were involved that led to a series of arrests and eventually allowed over 2,000 slaves to be reunited with their families. So it's the ability to act with confidence on uh, the basis of what you see. The positional accuracy is important because uh, at the end of the day, if you don't know where something is, you don't really know a lot about it at all. Uh, whether it's a um, an engineering application, a utility application, a, uh, an oil and gas application, that precision means you're not spending a lot of time registering other data sets to each other. In fact, that precision enables Digital Globe to be the gold standard against which you can register other data sets. In terms of uh, uh, platforms, you talked about uh, the emergence of platforms and also talked about uh, the Digital Globe's uh, geospatial big data platform. So uh, how do you, uh, how are you bringing a compute to the data with this platform? We have uh, worked in the Amazon Web Services environment to instantiate access to both the Digital Globe library of 80 petabytes worth of data that goes back to 1999, as well as a growing number of other data sources, whether it's uh, access to geotagged uh, social media uh, or um, uh, third-party uh, imagery data, uh, Landsat or other. And by placing it in the Amazon cloud, it means that uh, anybody who wants to perform analysis on that data has the ability to scale compute elastically in the same way that Amazon Web Services provides to any of their other customers. So in effect, by placing data in the cloud, which already has compute, you don't have the problem anymore of data logistics. We've taken care of that for you. So all this is provided on a service basis? That's correct. It's a, a subscription service. Uh, there are both developer tiers and then uh, tiers as you take a product into uh, actual operation. As a person in, involved in this uh, technology for a long time, Earth Observation can really play a key role in, uh, in uh, 
solving several of the society's challenges. And I see Digital Globe has enormous uh, uh, amount of archival data. How are you, as a company who is quite very, 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 very reputed and high, high, I mean, uh, innovative technologies, uh, bringing this data to the use of the society? The larger goals of the society. Maybe I'll start with our purpose, which is seeing a better world, yes. which is uh, helping our customers as they save lives, resources, and time. And so whether that is in aiding in disaster response, uh, like recently um, uh, open sourcing data after the, the earthquake in Ecuador, um, the uh, fishing example, uh, helping uh, uh, free a number of slaves, uh, or what are perhaps less public, but nonetheless uh, very relevant examples of uh, mapping population in the developing world, whether it's for the delivery of vaccines or the delivery of internet, uh, we see the ability to observe the entire planet with uh, what I described in my talk as almost a macroscope, uh, seeing things that are larger than the human eye can see and maybe even larger than the human brain can comprehend. Uh, that's where we begin to bring value to solving those global problems. Are you also, um, as a corporate social responsibility, willing to open up this data for free? We have in a number of cases. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, uh, the response to the earthquake. Uh, we also are uh, making data available to support uh, research and um, uh, recently have uh, announced with um, NVIDIA and um, Incutel uh, one of a series of data challenges where they are uh, uh, able to access, researchers are able to access data sets that we place available for research uh, to develop innovative machine learning applications. Uh, we have also, through the Digital Globe Foundation, made uh, data available for uh, a wide range of educational purposes. We have been talking about mainstreaming the geospatial and uh, finding more relevance for this technology uh, for, to solve the society's problems. Uh, is Digital Globe being a key player in this uh, industry looking at uh, creating that kind of a value? We are in the sense that um, if you wanted to be a producer of uh, geospatial data in the past, you had to be pretty expert in a number of disciplines. Uh, if you wanted to derive value from satellite imagery, you needed to understand remote sensing. You needed to understand maybe machine learning and data science. And those are relatively high hurdles for uh, making it accessible to a large population. So we've put a lot of effort into lowering the barriers by taking care of the undifferentiated geospatial heavy lifting mm -hmm. so that it's easy for a developer. I mean, in an extreme case, uh, we introduced something called Maps API, which uh, in a partnership with Mapbox enables a developer with two lines of code to have access to the world's uh, most beautiful and most accurate base map. And all the way on up the technology stack to analyzing uh, data at extremely large scale uh, with our geospatial big data platform. From the business standpoint, we are seeing that uh, the pixel price is hitting a rock bottom at this point. So how do you see, uh, how are you reorienting uh, a digital globe uh, to maintain profitability levels? So first, I think it's a mistake to say that pixel price is hitting rock bottom. Uh, you are seeing uh, some degree of commoditization at the low end, but physics fundamentally says if you want high resolution, you need a big camera. And we are not seeing commoditization at the high end uh, for the sort of large area um, global high resolution coverage that we're providing. Having said that, dealing with extremely large amounts of high resolution data is out of the realm of what any IT department can handle. And so that's one of the reasons why we've moved uh, aggressively to enabling cloud services. If you want to perform data analytics on continent scale data, that would have crushed a normal IT department. But now with the advent of cloud, it's possible to do all of that in an AWS environment without having to break the IT bank. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Walter. Okay. It's a pleasure Thanks talking to you. Much.